Andatzel. All right, boys and girls, time to get back to it. For those that tuned in on Wednesday, you guys saw us dive into uh, ripping off the supercharger, installing our sicky gaskets, thermal gaskets underneath it, checking things over, etc. And now I'm ready to finish it up. Got our surge tanks ready and pretty much got everything cleaned up, ready to go. We have everything in place. Uh, these are just test mounted right now, but I did the injector adapters. We got our fuel rail. Throttle body situated, everything's kind of buttoned up, plugged back in, etc. We just need our surge tanks and our air intake assembly. One thing to point out real quick and shout out to you, Wishmaster, a uh, subscriber that commented last time and reminded me that I forgot, and I realized that I forgot actually after I put it on, but I forgot to tape up the part of the harness I was exposed. So I had maybe one of my biggest brain moments ever, and uh, I remembered they make this stuff called liquid tape. And I used it to repair the harness by just barely sneaking in there with this uh, <laughs> custom-made extended paintbrush. So I layered on pretty thick in there, made sure I covered up all the spots, did like three or four layers of this, let it dry an hour in between over the last day. And uh, yeah, it's all good now. I also did keep the fuel rail tucked underneath the supercharger. Um, I was gonna put it on top, but I don't have my vise here yet, so I'm not able to redo the and line to a little bit shorter. And I figured out a little easier way to get it installed. So it's not that big a deal. Um, it'll work and it was working for a long time before this. So that's it. We are just gonna get right into it. Surge tanks going on. These were quite sticky getting these silicone couplers off. So I am going to put uh, some grease on them this time to make them easy to slide because yeah, it was like, I literally had to stand on one of them and rip them off, rip them apart because they were so stuck together. So we'll do something with that, basically to install those, do one at a time, put the couplers on, the uh, clamps, and then install the other ones, slide everything over to join them. So yeah, it's gonna be a process, but let's get it done. We're close. All right, you guys, Rage Against Machine on in the background. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted. Uh, just torque these down. I did eight foot pounds. Uh, factory calls for 10 uh, newton meters, which is about seven something foot pounds. So I did eight to be safe. Uh, I feel like they did a pretty good job of getting everything tight. This is something I'll check back on after driving a little while um, just to make sure they haven't come loose. Uh, we did do the blue Hylomar on both sides of the gasket. And I have the back also tightened. One thing to note, because we are raising this slightly, um, you are putting a little bit more of a stretch on the coupler back here, but I don't think it's enough to really affect anything. Still looks like it's sealing just fine. I tightened it up. I did actually break one of the clamps, so luckily I had another laying around, just over tightening it with the Milwaukee, not paying attention, but um, eventually I would like to find some silicone couplers to replace those factory ones, but for now they will work just fine, so. Uh, yeah, now comes the fun part of lining up our couplers and our clamps and then installing the other one and sliding the couplers over. Alright you guys, that one is situated. This is how I do things. Uh, I just use a little bit of synthetic grease and uh, lubed up both sides pretty good. And then I'm just going to leave these basically sitting here waiting for the other side. Uh, I can't remember if these need to be all the way flush or how close together the two um, barbs sit, but We'll see once we get this lined up and uh, go from there. Whew, man, it feels good to be at this point, you guys. All right, everything is tightened down. I will check all of our connectors, etc., and uh, make sure we're good to go. Boosters back there, fuel lines tightened up, all the lines for the catch can should be okay. Um, what else we got to check on? Oh, something I didn't show you guys last time. I split the loom a little bit right here for the last two injector connectors so that this connector can sit a little more flush for the adapter just to stay out of the way of the air box. Um, and guys, I was seriously considering taking off the supercharger again and throwing our adapters underneath and I would have, but there is no way it would have cleared the hood. It was already, I basically sat them on top of here, closed the hood and I can barely get it to close. 
and that is <laughs> at the top of the supercharger if you would have factored in the surge tanks and the crossovers no way it would have fit without us basically cutting a hole in the hood and doing some type of like reverse hood scoop or something which i'm not opposed to but i don't really have the time to dive through that right now it would have been awesome to save a ton of you know heat um or you know help a lot with heat management by raising up the supercharger having a lot more air travel underneath um, would have made things easier like you know getting to things for the lines and fuel line whatever but at the end of the day it just it would have been more headache i think than it's worth right now the supercharger belt would have had to be changed as well because it would have raised by an inch so i would have had to get another one of those i already have a new one planned for once we do the fixed mil uh, fixed 80 millimeter pulley so yeah there's a lot <laughs> i'm throwing a lot of variables in the mix right now i just didn't feel like it's a time to go for that type of project however if i end up finding a donor hood someday or you know a spare hood I would gladly cut a spare hood up and try to make that happen because I think the benefits would be worth the kind of trouble to make it work with raising the supercharger up like that. So if you guys are interested in those uh, spacers, let me know. Um, I can help you figure out how to get a pair yourself. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be throwing them on the CVD5, but for this setup, I don't think it was the right move at this time. So. That said, uh, we got to get our airbox assembly back in, and I think that is pretty much it. I've plugged in everything as I went. Um, I did switch in the knees wings uh, block off port plugs because um, I had some generic ones and they were kind of sticking out more than they needed to. So put those in, and yeah, I think we're going to be ready to go. I'm going to have to fill in some coolant to our um, reservoir for cooling and then put the belt back on and just double check all my work before we go ahead and try to turn the key over and check for leaks check for all that stuff and then eventually fire it up all right you guys tied it up last thing to do is get our our supercharger belt on and then we'll go ahead and replace the fluid that we lost uh, on our journey getting the hoses off Okay, that was a fight. I believe the belt that's on here right now is kind of a perfect fit and maybe raising up the supercharger by whatever that is, not even a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch maybe, um, was just enough to make that thing pretty tight to get on. So we'll see, we might not even need to adjust our belt size once we put the 80 millimeter pulley on, but time will tell. I think it's okay right now. It doesn't feel, um, too overly tight but definitely tight so hopefully we don't get belt slip with this setup but we'll see all right guys and the little custom fab expansion tank over here is still pretty full um i'll put a little bit of fluid in it it's gonna need to like burp itself i'm sure to be able to pull that fluid down that's sitting in there right now a lot of it was probably sitting in a pump and the lines so I'll put a little bit in right now and then we'll check it after running for a little while. All right guys, everything buttoned back up. Filled up a little bit of coolant. Uh, it was kind of cool. I just knocked on this thing and it burped itself. So I'm sure after I cycle the key a few times, it'll kind of burp itself going through um, the pump and everything. So we'll cycle, cycle key a few times. I'll check fuel lines, make sure we got no leaks. Now we can fire it up. And the key thing uh, Josh wants me to keep an eye on right now is just what our um, long-term fuel trims look like with the new injectors. And do it one more time and we'll go check. Okay, all right, ultra gauges. Booting up. Okay, we'll let that boot up and let's go check. See if we got fuel pressure. <clears throat> okay, fuel pressure is still building up. 
but enough to see if we got any leaks. Uh, look okay. It's an auto body relearning. Okay, no fuel leak at the back. Um, okay, let's see how much this went down. Come on now. Okay, it's still pretty close to the top, so that should be okay. I'll check that after we fire it up. Okay, let me cycle the key a few more times. fuel pressure where it needs to be and I may have to I forgot about that actually I may have to purge the lines because for some reason the way we have these set up um, it gets air trapped in the lines so maybe I should crack one actually let's see what the pressure is at <clears throat> Okay, pressure's where it's supposed to be. Let's crack this one so that we can get the air out. All right guys, just uh, clear that out. It was definitely a ton of air the first time I undid it. Literally just air came out and then I did it about four times and uh, now we got a nice stream of fuel. So that should be okay. Um, cool, it didn't go down, pressure is okay. So I think we're ready to uh, test fire this thing. You always get butterflies a bit when you do a big project like this, but I did this over a period of few days and tried to always do it with a clear head, so I think we'll be okay. Let's test fire, fingers crossed. All right, still getting fuel up, and we got brand new injectors too. reading correctly that's actually an improvement because it was running a little bit lean before it was close to like I want to say positive 10 on the long terms and now you can see the short terms are all kind of sitting in the negative for the most part that one jumped up there okay now it's a there it is plus again long terms I might have to drive it to see what it's at so good not much change which is what we wanted to see um, there should be a little bit obviously with the newer style injectors but it's not like we changed you know to a 630 or something huge we stuck at 550s so it shouldn't have caused too dramatic of a change but I'm gonna let this thing run I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit all right guys went ahead and shut it down for now uh, I'll wait till it's a little bit cooler out tonight and we'll take it just for some quick laps around the neighborhood make sure all is well 
and uh, we'll send back the data to Josh so that we can um, adjust the tune if need be before we go to the next move, which is the fixed pulley. So exciting. I'm very, very happy to be at this point. It's one thing doing the supercharger removal on, you know, a junkyard car where the stakes are low. It's another thing doing it on, you know, your own car that's a perfectly running and driving car that rips and then you take it all apart and put it back together and, um, you know, hope that you did everything right. So I think we made a good seal. I'm going to check our uh, torque on the surge tanks here after it cools again. And yeah, I'll catch you guys back in the garage later this evening. All right, guys, we're back later on in the evening around eight o'clock, nice and cool now and shady. Uh, I just gotta move the C55 out of the way, take a scene for a quick cruise, nothing crazy. I'm not really gonna rip on it at all. Just wanna cruise it enough so I can get a gauge on the uh, long-term fuel trims. And then we'll pull the C55 in because it's up next and we'll park this outside so we can wash it later on. And uh, yeah, super happy right at this point. So let me fire it up after we move this thing. All right, CVT5 is out of the way. Let's go ahead, fire this thing up. Double check everything again up front and back it out. Healthy startup. Had the battery on the charger while it was down for all the work, so definitely helps. All right guys, CVD5 is put away in the garage. Let's go take this thing for a spin. All right guys, well so far, I mean, I was like, I don't know if these were reading accurate or not, but the long-term fuel trims look like they're right at zero, which is a huge improvement just with the EV14 injectors. Oh, there we go, it is reading, okay. I like that it actually changed because now it's showing me that it's reading, but that's a huge improvement. It's basically, kind of right where it needs to be now um, because it used to run like I said around positive 10 and once I would get in it it would go down to zero but if it's running at positive 10 that basically means that it's running lean so now it's staying closer to zero and now you can see the negatives that's great that's what we want to see and it's kind of a comfortable spot to be able to move forward now uh, I think for Josh and I so that's awesome great news and Super impressive for just throwing in a set of injectors, the same size injectors, and to have it be able to do that is super cool. And I will say, I don't, I don't necessarily think our surge tanks or supercharger were leaking anywhere, but it definitely seems happier. Like as soon as I fired up and it got, you know, idling and everything, it just seems like it's running smoother. Just fresh seals and everything all gone through. I think it's happy. Happy fuel trims, those are great. Let's go back home. I'm happy. Whew. All right, that feels so good to be at this point now. Now we can finally move forward with the next steps in the process. Get the fixed pulley on there from UPD. Uh, there's a few things I want to sort out. I know I still have an exhaust leak on the right side where one of the clamps are, so I might need to get a new clamp for it. Or realistically, I would love to V-band that section because I don't like those clamps. They just, I mean, they work pretty good like the first couple times, but after you undo them enough times, they, they always lose pressure, I feel like. Um, so that, and then we got to get the creative steel motor mounts in. And I also want to do the painstaking knuckle busting job of uh, getting the front half of the wise tech pulley off again so I can do a modification to the belt tensioner because right now I have to remove the wise tech crank pulley front half in order to get the serpentine belt off to get to the 17 millimeter to turn the tensioner and it's just a headache. So I want to modify that and also bypass the AC compressor while I'm on there because I'm never going to be using AC in this car and uh, I don't know how well it works anyways after they did the swap. So I'd rather bypass that and uh, not have to worry about a compressor clutch failure or anything like that while I'm out ripping on this thing. So just simplify it and uh, try to continue to make it as bulletproof as I can. And uh, yeah, we'll move forward with it. But man, I'm stoked. All right. I know I promised I watched it at the end of this video, but 
I'm trying to eat dinner, guys, so <laughs> I'll leave it. We'll wash it. I'm going to leave it here specifically for that reason. We'll get it washed up, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon, Monday. We'll see what we got in store. I've been trying to work on this thing, working on a few other things. We're going to get started in the C55. So I will catch you guys at that time. Thank you so much for watching. Love all you guys. Peace. Peace.